welcome to this, the latest episode of Book Time with Elvis, with me, Mark. And today I want to talk... Well, I've been reading a lot of books for Women's History Month, and um, I came across another book today um, that probably fits in, though it might be a bit controversial given the subject matter. Um, I bought the book quite a long time ago, and I bought it after watching um, a television series um, called City of Vice. And I don't know if it aired in America, but it was on Channel 4 in Britain. And it was the story of the author Henry Fielding and his brother, uh, his blind brother, who became known as the Blind Beak of Beaks, uh, of uh, Bow Street, uh, because both Henry Fielding and his brother were judges or magistrates in George and London. And of course, we know Henry Fielding for his book, um, Tom Jones, uh, The Story of a Foundling, or History of a Foundling. Um, and he's credited for starting one of London's first kind of police forces, known as the Bow Street Runners. And, you know, George and London at this time was a very, it's a fascinating place, but also a very horrible place, I think. I, I don't really think I'd like to, to go there. Um, you know, there was a lot of crime, but there were also extremely strict punishments. I mean, you could get the death penalty for, for, for almost anything. It was, it was quite, uh, quite a horrible time to, um, to be living. And of course, later on, instead of the death penalty, many people got transportation, um, for life to, to Australia. And I believe also, um, before independence, uh, the United States, as well as, uh, the Caribbean as well. Um, so anyway, going back to this book, um, this book is called Harris's List, Harris's List of Covent Garden Ladies, Sex in the City in Georgian Britain. And this book is basically a list of all of London's uh, prostitutes, female prostitutes. And um, what's interesting, I think, about it is that, you know, it's uh, it's written from, I think it was uh, 1757 uh, all the way through to 1790. So it had um, pretty much 30 years of publications. The author was said to be a man called um, John Harrison, who went by the name of Jack Harris, and he was the self-titled um, pimp general of the people, uh, sorry, pimp general to the people of England. So I don't know if that's a title that one would really uh, want to have. However, it was discovered, um, I think, pretty much uh, with the academic um, Haley Rubenhold, who wrote, uh, who compiled this book, and she also wrote a book uh, about uh, about the list and its history. Uh, it wasn't actually this Jack Harris who, who did it at all. It was um, a poet known as Samuel Derrick. And what it's... I think the thing is, it's very difficult um, maybe to talk about something like this without coming across as like sensationalist. But I really am extremely interested in social history. I have a lot of books on uh, Georgian London because although I find it quite... Um, a horrible place. There is a fascination. Um, there is a fashion, fascination about it that I find uh, really um, to be quite a big draw. So I think when they, when when she found out that the list was actually compiled by um, this poet Samuel Derrick, that he suggested from his own papers and things that he didn't write it as like to be demeaning uh, perhaps to the women involved but he saw it as providing a service not only to the men at the time but also perhaps providing uh, these women um, with an income because you know it would have been a very you know there was a lot of poverty in in Georgian London and what shocks me when I read this actually is the number of women uh, titled misses and probably they are they are widows or their husbands are estranged and they've lost uh, any means of uh, making money, so they turned, of course, to the oldest uh, profession. It's quite an important 
uh, list or book for social history of, of George and London. As I said, it ran for almost 30 years. And the author, Reuben Hall, estimates that it sold at least 250,000 copies. And you know, many so-called gentlemen would have carried this around. And in fact, on the inside flap, it says, if you ever wondered what Jane Austen's Mr. Darcy and his fellows got up to on their numerous trips to London, read the book that they certainly would have carried around. So it kind of puts maybe Mr. Darcy in a bit of a different light, perhaps. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. I did just choose one as an example uh, to read out on this, because as I say, I don't want to have this come across as a, a demeaning thing or a joke thing, but rather just an interesting piece of social history. So the one I've chosen, the way it's written, it's they're just short um, entries, really. Um, the one I've chosen here is about a Mrs. Vincent. I'm assuming it's Vincent. He blocks out the names, like the entirety, so it's like V slash C-E-N-T, so maybe it's not rocket science to work it out. But I'm, I'm guessing it's a Mrs. Vincent of Wardour Street in London. And before each entry, there's a little poem, and it says, She'll nicely chose and neatly spread upon her cheeks the best French red. So I suppose he's talking there, of course, about rouge and, and heavy makeup that maybe um, these women would have worn. And then the entry reads, This lady is about 30, not of very advantageous stature, but her fine eyes cannot be looked upon without exciting all the thrilling emotions of desire in the soul of the beholder. She keeps the house and is to be met with in the parlour, all her apartments being let out. Nothing under gold will be accepted here. It's not too bad. Some of them are a little bit offensive. I mean, he, he's not slow to call out women who may have the pox, uh, of course, infected by their, uh, by their uh, gentleman callers. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's a different slant maybe uh, on uh, in this month of women's history to not just look at the, um, I, I suppose the women we can say we can we can look up to, but then the, the but also to look of course at the the poor women um, of George and London who had no other options really in the in the society they lived in, other than to you know um, sell themselves uh, in order to put food on the table. So yeah, that's my little video for today. Um, it is very interesting, and I say if you like social history uh, and George in England, and, and you know the um, the early time, I suppose of of Jane Austen, uh, then you'll get to see it in in a very different light. So that's my little chat about Harris's list of Covent Garden ladies by Haley Rubenhold. So thank you very much. Booktube for listening and very nice to see you all again and look forward to our next chat. Uh, I wish you all well. Stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye bye.